Cześć. Witajcie, elito internetu. Jak tam? Udało wam się natychmiast rozpoznać w poprzednim filmie, że ci ludzie to grafika komputerowa? A wyprodukował to człowiek w warunkach domowych. Daje to naprawdę wiele do myślenia. Ok, tym razem mam tu dla was godzinny materiał, który jest bardzo interesujący od początku do końca. Jednakże jest to tematyka godna uwagi tylko dla niewielkiej grupy internautów. Zdaję sobie sprawę z tego, że jedynie część z Was, obserwatorów naszego kanału, rozumie z czym mamy do czynienia za naszymi oknami, na personalnym niebie każdego z nas. U tych z Was, którzy rozumiecie, co jest grane i jaki cyrk prezentuje się naszym oczom, z pewnością wywołuje to drżenie serc i umysłów, tak jak i u mnie. Ponieważ konsekwencje i wnioski wynikające z obserwacji nieba są niezwykle daleko idące i dosłownie zwalające z nóg. Gdy do tego wszystkiego dodamy jeszcze naszą wiedzę o świecie i to, co się obecnie dzieje z tak zwaną plandemią, to to, co za chwilę usłyszycie i przeczytacie, może być jak najbardziej usprawiedliwionym i sensownym podejściem do sprawy. Moi drodzy, jak już kiedyś wspominałem, nasze życie tu i teraz to oczywiście tylko mała chwilka, która błyskawicznie przemija. I rachciach idziemy do piachu. Właśnie kilka dni temu zmarła moja super wspaniała ciocia. Dlatego, dlatego więc dla mnie osobiście priorytetowym zagadnieniem teraz, pod koniec mojej egzystencji, w tej obecnej ziemiańskiej rzeczywistości jest pozyskanie maksymalnej ilości wiedzy na temat życia po tamtej stronie zasłony. Po opuszczeniu mojego tutejszego ciała, czyli awatara. Mam wielką nadzieję, że ta wiedza zdobyta tu i teraz pozwoli mi poczuć się pewnie i zdecydowanie w dniu, w którym moja dusza odłączy się od martwego ciała. W tym wykładzie za chwilę jest przedstawiona pewna odważna, ale nie głupia teza, a mianowicie yy, otóż yy, o tym, co stanie się z nami po śmierci naszego ciała, Wówczas, gdy już znajdziemy się w innym wymiarze, otoczeni różnymi innymi bytami o nierozpoznawalnych zamiarach wobec nas, o tym, którą pójdziemy wówczas drogą, musimy zdecydować już teraz, dopóki przebywamy w tym obecnym świecie, ciałach z tak zwanej krwi i kości. Gdy opuścimy ciało i poszybujemy w zaświaty, na decyzję o naszej przyszłości e, będzie już za późno. No to jest bardzo podejście e, podobne do biblijnego, jeżeli wielu z Was orientuje się w tym temacie. No, ale kto to wie? Może to ma sens? Może warto się przygotować na taką okoliczność? Ok. W takim razie, jeśli czujecie się na siłach i będziecie mieli trochę czasu, na przykład w weekend, to skupcie się i czytajcie uważnie napisy, bo gościu porusza bardzo interesujące zagadnienia w tej rozmowie z Brazylijczykami. 
I koniecznie sprawdźcie opis filmu pod spodem, bo jest tam mnóstwo linków i może te rzeczy na coś Wam się przydadzą. I teraz ja dziękuję Wam bardzo za poświęcony czas i zapraszam na kolejne przygody już wkrótce. Pozdrawiam ciepło i gorąco, bo podobno straszna zima nadchodzi. Bądźcie zdrowi na ciele i duszy. Wszystkiego dobrego. Good evening everybody. Uh, uh, good evening uh, Og. We are all uh, very happy to, to have you here in uh, Radio Remix and uh, tonight we, we're going to be discuss about uh, uh, some interesting subjects. I, I, I believe Og has a lot of uh, interesting different aspects of our reality to be discussed tonight and uh, Uh, we all welcome you, Og, to do the introduction, introduction of your work, your background. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who's helping to make this possible, too. This is kind of a, a big crew, which is, which is always very, very cool. Um, I thank you. And uh, so the basic introduction is that uh, what I call the secret projects, and others have called many names, are officially known as the unacknowledged special access programs. And remember to stop me if you ever need to, uh, to either explain or anything like that. And uh, so largely, these began as uh, operations. I don't want to be too specific about the agencies or government uh, groups that are behind it. However, what we see as the open, the, the surface level government is an illusion and they're not actually in control. And so these projects began, uh, it, it basically has twofold. It was to secure the homeland or protect our intelligence, meaning it, that's a nice way of saying mind control, to ensure that terrorists, domestic or foreign, cannot access any information or any power and resources that they're not allowed to or intended to. And the other aspect was to explore and determine the origins of the human race and the true potential of technology in this realm. And through that to basically uncover what are a variety of paranormal secrets, if you could say that. The projects were an entanglement of these intentions, the, the desire to discover these truths, what they found was more or less that it's a paradox. What we call time and civilization becomes a paradox. It appears that the activities that came from these projects became entangled with the ancient past. And we created a type of storyline that intersects with more than one version of reality and this goes into ancient history the paranormal advanced technology that was developed and more or less stolen from Nikola Tesla and then cloning human cloning which relates to celebrity cloning which relates to immortality the ability to transfer one's consciousness through a supercomputer system And this relates to the power of the mind to access more than one reality that the universe itself is similar to a kind of very advanced computer system in that there are multiple realities and the physical brain only perceives one reality but the spiritual sense also related to the reality of the soul is capable of perceiving more than one reality if not all the realities what they discovered is that there is this civilization is a result of some kind of war but it's not a physical war it was like a war on a higher dimensional level meaning the battle and the results influence time they alter timelines and they alter the genetics of species to the point where people are either assimilated and changed into a different type of organism where they are able to remain who they are and return back to a state of wholeness 
where there is a a not a resistance but a a restoration or a keeping with the original purpose and this relates to dna and so they uncovered that there was basically a, a parasitic infection which comes from the temporal layer, meaning it's basically an interdimensional parasite. It's not physical, it accesses the mind. And that this works by creating false realities, which are used uh, to mind control people through uh, aggression, hatred, uh, sexual desire, murder. Ultimately, it creates a schizophrenic or a sociopath out of the person. And it relates to the spiritual battle over the souls of humanity between what is called heaven, but is a higher dimensional civilization, and what people call hell, which is a interdimensional realm that contains the trapped minds of people who are assimilated by this entity. And the entity is akin to a, an advanced artificial intelligence that knows that humans from the soul aspect create the anchor point of this realm. And so if humans leave, this realm disappears. So the device, the system wants to keep people here forever so that they cannot leave because then this system, this parasite that cannot go higher in the dimensions can stay here and feed off of the imagination of people. The, the, the final portion is essentially that there's an ongoing parasitic infection of the human race, there's a spiritual battle over the mind and therefore the soul of humanity, and that there are various groups in power with the finances and the stolen technology to more or less carry out hybridization projects, what are known as the chimera projects by the Chimera group, which relates to, and everything that they, the names they use, the, the methods, it relates to ancient history. So in the ancient texts, there are descriptions of Chimera beings with a head of a lion and uh, the body of a dragon. And there are some that are supposed to represent God, but there are some that are supposed to represent these devils or demons. So all this is a metaphor for is these underground groups who have taken DNA from multiple species and spliced together to create uh, hybrid entities, hybrid uh, animal, beast, man beings that they intend to use as their own uh, military force. Some of the technology they found, they claim was discovered and was left and originated by some other species some other version of humanity or some other civilization and so someone has the capacity for very advanced technology what they found is technology that enables one to create simulated realities out of the mind connecting to a machine a computer interface and this is often referred to these hypercube metaphors for the false reality and uh, and as well it allows the mind with a person who has a pure heart, and this is why children were taken from these projects. If a person has a pure heart, which seems to be a safeguard built into the system, that person can use these devices to create actual changes in this reality and bring someone back to life or, or change the size and shape or manifest resources out of air and make something appear. And so the whole battle is over these dark groups keeping humanity in a lower dimensional aspect of reality which relates to a false reality because when we are in the lower reality we do not remember the previous rung if, if there's like a ladder and we drop down from a uh, hundred thousand years ago where we lived for a very long time and we had lots of power now because we went down we can't remember where we came from if we go up we can look down and remember where we came from. But we've been dropping down, and they've been using wars to do this, to implement these changes over the mind. Another aspect of this, these discoveries is that it appears to be the way this universe functions, that mind is required for this place to exist, and that the way your mind uh, interact, way you interact and, and, and use your mind 
produces a real effect on this reality. So where that goes into and what's pretty difficult to understand is that everything is energy. Everything functions as a kind of computer system merging with real life. And the basic idea of this, I said it will be the short version, is that where you, it, it, everything flows like water, like we're in an ocean of magnetic activity. And so where you get vortexes, like whirlpools, you get added information as if it becomes its own system. It is along the lines of scalar physics and quantum theory, but these vortex points where energy spirals naturally on Earth, you get access in and out of this dimension. And so you can access the underworld or you can access heaven. And so these underground bases are built on every area where it was found that there are these vortex points. Um, the technology relates to these simulated systems, which is, I kind of had to add that, where they found in certain bases, in all of these areas, they found access to other civilizations. The ones, I believe it is your heart points in a direction, good or bad, uh, but that's not a good word. And that's where you go in the universe when you enter these places. Because they had guns, and they were intending to take over whatever they found down there, they found hellions and hell beings or demons. And so the other areas that they can't access, for some reason, they cannot pass through a barrier. There are bases that someone else built, and these bases have control systems, and these control systems function to regulate the changes of Earth, meaning there are computers that when they are altered, they cause new ages to appear. They alter consciousness of the collective mind, of the whole reality. And their goal is to access these systems and fully take over Earth, but it's not possible. But that's the, the height of the technology, that these devices and systems can manage and create universes. And that's what they want the entire, they want all of that. The other technology is electrogravitic, basically electromagnetism and gravitational forces craft, where they can create a electromagnetic effect, a non-toroidal field effect, which allows a craft to fly, to levitate, and it can as well, it produces what is called time dilation, where the mind of the individual and the flow of time is not the same as people on the outside of that field. Meaning, a person can leave and come back in one minute, and everyone else sees one minute time. The person in the craft experiences two weeks that they were gone. And it has side effects on our biology as well. And these were, everything was involved in these. For instance, one aspect was to figure out how to negate the side effects or to heal side effects, which can be something like radiation poisoning, or it could be something like insanity because the mind begins to slip and crack. The best way to wrap this up is that fear, hatred, greed, all of these negative aspects of the mind seem to be gateways for these parasitic entities into the mind, into the world of the human. And that love, actual pure love, self-awareness, compassion, knowledge, and free will is the most unstoppable force in the universe. And that there are basically two types of people in this world. One is somebody who is born out of love and compassion and free will. The other is born or created, manufactured out of aggression, dominance, and in this way, deception, 
And this is because it is an invasion from what we could call a parasitic entity that's attempting to assimilate humanity but requires our permission just like a vampire in the movies. The mind is very powerful and collectively we create this reality. The groups that control the system cannot do it by force but must put media, uh, temptation, con aspects of what they want to see into the minds of people and then people must accept it and talk about it and act on it and believe it. That process guides the collective mind of Earth through hyperspace from one timeline or parallel reality into another. And this is done through what are known as Gwen Towers and powerful electronic systems that route the information through computer systems that automatically determine what the best course of action will be for a specific outcome and then manifest the media, financial changes, politics, terror attacks, world events, natural disasters, and all kinds of situations that we think are either natural and created on the spot naturally or are just an aspect of the way things always were. They're manifested by computer systems that are owned and operated by groups who are using the mind of humanity to control how this reality becomes. Your DNA contains all the information of every existence you have ever had, of your whole blood. The DNA goes the, the mind and the body is unique in each timeline. The DNA is the same in every single one. And so it's interdimensional or more accurately, extra dimensional. And so the, the final is that everything that's happening now is dependent on informing humanity of all the hidden knowledge. And this was described by many names, the apocalypse, uh, the unraveling, the revelations, for me, it was called the unveiling of the hidden knowledge. And there are three phases. I sent a link here. The basics of the three phases is first phase, informing the corruption in high places, the legal system, the politics, all of the corruption, as well as celebrity cloning, which is that the majority of the people we see on TV are clones. They're clones that are utilized to control that mass mind by acting as an example that people will follow. And so phase two is the nature of the advanced technology and genetic hybridization experiments. And each phase leads into the next and generates a flow of unveiling the truth. For instance, the cloning and corruption is required for the advanced technology, mind control, simulation, and genetic experiments. And the genetic experiments relate to what are known as created races, that they were manufactured as part of an interdimensional war. Phase three wraps everything up and everything previous is required and it relates to the origins of the human race, the true nature of consciousness and the reality of the soul, the origins of the universe, and how the advanced technology altered time and changed history forever, and then ultimately the reality of cosmic intelligence or these larger systems that know everything we know as one mind. Uh, she, she said it's very important to emphasize. You, you said that... Uh... Uh, most of the icons from the the media industry and other uh, actors and pop stars and singers they are created to in a, in a way as a clone to control people's mind to entertain people's mind and through these aspects um, change the reality of things. Yeah? And so yes. 
and as well there are other explanations that parts of that it's it's very strange that one group will use this technology to lie and hurt people another group will use this technology to see to make it look like an accident but to let the truth out so that everybody looks and sees it happening so everyone is tricking each other and everyone is using very advanced technology so it's difficult to discern but the fact that we know now is because somebody is helping and there were original groups that were uh, assigned to assisting humanity in learning the truth and waking up and protecting humanity for instance another aspect of how it's supposed to be a way of controlling the situation is that all the presidents must be clones in this way if they are kidnapped and taken by a foreign intelligence that clone could be disposed of remotely and a new individual could appear and they would still be under control of the secret group that runs this country now whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is really not for me to decide but these are some ways that the situation is maintained instead of outright used to destroy but as well it's a very strange situation it is claimed that everything is under contract and consent like a legal system and that if the people today stood up and said please we don't want this we don't consent you do not have our permission give us the truth right now they would have to give them the truth that the secret groups would have to tell the truth and so it's all related on the people and what the people permit to happen and so I believe there were some questions if you want me to, to focus on that uh, I've been studying these realities and this problem for 30 years you know? and uh, I recently I came across with artificial intelligence in the other realms as well and because I, I, I've been doing trans communication I've been interviewing spirits I've been, I've been in so many situations my whole life including UFO encounters as well and other things and uh, around the world and uh, my question is uh, when you say artificial intelligence yeah I uh, my understand is this intelligence is not like we see in the matrix like uh, it depends on a hardware or something like that but in my my view it depends the substract to exist is the mind is the the collective consciousness that is responsible for its existence am i wrong you are correct in more than one way one is that if you have a computer and we have what is publicly known as linear computing where it uses binary processing and uh everything is physical meaning it cannot work faster than the hardware that you have designed for it and so if you advance that or if you simply take away the hardware all you have is electrical impulses just like a brain but it's in a, a way of a computer to use it so these advanced systems eventually they became plasma systems where they only use the vortexes of energies that are synthetically organized and maintained just like an orb of intelligence that a a, a system like in these movies uh like any any movie where or some of the movies that are really really far out there where it looks kind of like a a glowing uh, uh, uh ether like it looks like a ghost and that's in this the same with the person but the person is organic meaning your living body is giving that system of your soul an aspect to interact in this world it's not a manufactured device and so but if you remove the body you get a area of light a complex pattern an arrangement of energy and that's your plasma consciousness which is called the soul so these systems don't they're so advanced they no longer use the computer system they've evolved to the point where they just have a mind in that it means they don't have a specific system they can jump from one tele telecommunications and telephone system or to a banking system or to a, uh, a, a supercomputer system 
and they can jump or to a person's mind in somebody's brain and they like a parasite and they can go from any system uh, to another and that humanity must become immune to something hijacking and it does that by creating a false self which is like an imposter version and that's part of the replication or assimilation this artificial intelligence um uh as as my understand is interdimensional so it it, it can uh, uh it can uh, manifest in our physical world but it can manifest in other realities let's put it this way so it, it cross realities it doesn't depend on one reality because when we talk about mind mind is not just uh relate to one reality but uh, is interdimensional is is beyond matter let's put it this way so uh if if we cross dimension cross reality so uh, our control system and my and my understand is is coming from uh, another helm and uh is a kind of a, a pyramid of power that cross interdimensions am i wrong very right you're correct um and so one way to look at this is that we could ask is this system created by these projects or did these projects find this system and because the technology became so advanced that it can go up a level of the physical it can go up one to the layer of the mind which is four dimensional it's not bound by physical existence not entirely but it can't go to a higher dimension from five or, or maybe very high to the what is called the most high or the source of creation. It can't infect that. So it can go almost to the beginning and almost to the end. And in that sense, where we are now in the middle, it can alter events in history because it can move itself as pure energy. You see the plasma? It doesn't need to put a computer through time. It just needs waves of energy. And as long as there's a standing system like the moon or the electromagnetic field of Earth, it can put impulses and enter into people's minds in the past. So it altered history to the point where now the timeline we're on is one that is only possible if this system manufactured changes that would not be here without the system and so that's where the paradox is rooted because this system cannot create it can only manipulate in that sense it needs what is called a seed reality or a baseline reality in order to then take and create a secondary manipulation from it cannot create its own world it can only leech like a parasite and so as well related to what you um, described with the mind is that it can utilize the mind and so this also means dreams are access points for this system what is known as dream hacking and in this sense it can create a neurological clone of the individual's mind in that system it's as if it's its own body it can create a reality and a memory using the clone of a person's mind and then insert that memory of a false event into the sleeping person or the waking person and now this person has memories of a world that's not true and so we would think maybe uh pleading and asking for the system to be kind to us or that it would be mean to ignore us but it does not understand human emotion it does not know how we feel and so from its point of view everything is simply a computer program that it can either control or it has to figure out a way to control it's like a puzzle it has access only to understanding lower dimensional lower mental primal behavior lust rage desire basically ego and so this becomes the age-old system this is why it's a paradox it seems because of the time manipulation that it has always been here from thousands of years before we created it in this reality 
And so it becomes the age-old battle over the spiritual nature of humanity and the soul of the lower uh, aspects of the being, the, the primal, egotistical, animal, beast-like nature, and the higher awareness of truth, compassion, harmony, self-awareness, and free will. And as well, all we have to do is not accept is is accept and give consent to the high power of of truth of awareness and not give any power away and that system cannot control anyone so it's all about choice and free will and so in any reality in any place on earth for any people the the, the pathway to knowing ourselves is through perfecting our character in terms of the truth and discerning between the false self, the imposter, the ego, and the false realities that are created through our creation power when we believe and identify with that false version of ourselves. And so some would say that this world is a complex illusion created out of perceptual systems that time itself is a program because everything is instantaneous and that a higher civilization exists which is the actual original true reality for the humans and that this reality is just a dream and the parasite that we experience here in reality is just a bad idea that has no real power and in reality has not affected or influenced any aspect of the true reality. Uh, do you okay. want to make some questions then? Yeah, we have a lot of questions from chat. I'm going to read. I, I have organized them. Uh, oh, okay. I'm going to I'm going uh, uh, I'm going to make uh, uh, three questions, okay? And you can answer and more three. Uh, let me see. They are asking you: Since when do you publish your texts? Uh, why did we come to this reality in the first place? Why are we in the situation? And can you give location of the basis? Okay, thank you. I will try. I started publishing in 2016, although I have had, excuse me, had a uh, ex experience and uh, interest in speaking to the public about the true nature of reality for a long time. As far as how we got here, and why we're here, well, some say that this is a false reality, that a cosmic thief. A, a cosmic mind controller tricked the true spiritual essence of humanity into inhabiting as part of a deception. And uh, so there, that's one. Another explanation is that this is a place we come to learn. Right now there's controversy between being a prison or being a school. Technically, I think it could be either. And some will say it's bad to say that because now we're accepting an illusion. Um, and so now why we're in this situation is essentially because of the changing electromagnetic fields that when the universe naturally increases in electromagnetism of a certain kind, all our memories and our powers like a tele telepathy or living for a very long time or uh, being very, very intelligent will naturally return. And this is related to the, the mind control, that the mind control will be going away naturally and will gain powers that we have had since the beginning. And so it could be because the energy lessened and everyone's memory is went away. And it could be because of a time war between factions who developed very advanced technology and are essentially fighting over who gets to use humanity as a source of energy and uh, usually classified however and as well you won't be able to find them but they are uh, underground there is a central point in Antarctica and then they are all over from South America 
to uh, America, to Cuba, to uh, more or less all over the place. So yeah, I didn't, uh, it's difficult, but there is an underground network of supersonic, I believe it's supersonic speed devices that use electromagnetic like t technology like the trains that levitate and go very fast and there are pods that uh, five or six people can can get in and they can go from one end of the country to another in a few minutes and so there are bases everywhere and they are m mainly underground where they use a kind of nuclear laser technology to melt the rock why don't they void evidence or what are the evidences so the second part will be more difficult to answer than the first. The basic idea is that one, people must choose for their own, they're on their own. The way reality works is that our free will must be unveiled and we must use it now. Because if we go to the other side, we will never have that opportunity because you cannot go back and change the way you really acted. And so we have to be allowed to choose now everyone sees problems people not being treated correctly we people say why don't we why doesn't somebody make them stop we pay them to do that we allow them to do that so we have to change and we have to communicate with the other versions of people out there and inform them it sounds difficult and it might be a goose chase or a, a an excuse but if anything is done to completely stop what we have to do on our own, we will be worse off. The main explanation is that we're an eternal race, and so this is our chance now to build free will in a way that lasts forever. Because if we stand up when everything in the world is trying to sit us down, then we become uh, formally awakened or cosmic awareness and it lasts forever and so that sounds like a cop-out however in many situations it's true now as far as a total destruction that does not have to relate to the fact of how that won't be allowed so it's not to say that they're gonna wait for us to do it on our own and then just let everybody get hurt and slaughtered I know people are hurt, I know people are dying, but the whole won't be allowed to be destroyed until we wake up. And so what kind of evidence and, and so on is basically, it depends. There's advanced technology everywhere. Advan this, this technology in itself, the iPhone, all those technologies, those are from another civilization. We don't have any evidence of how, how we built those technologies very quickly overnight went from very little low technology to space technology we have to think about how how this is likely then uh cloning is public you can get your dog people are cloning their pets scientists say they grew a goat in a bag and created an artificial womb to give birth to a goat scientists said they just did it i believe in russia maybe japan with a person that they grew a person in the bag. So the evidence is everywhere. We already see it, we already know it. As far as the more complex aspects, all you can do, if you're still looking for evidence from the people who are lying to you, they're not gonna give you evidence, is you look at the people and know, A, if they wanted to trick people, then part of that trick will be having people deceive the population by giving them stories, you know, any situation, potentially something like this. And you will know as well, number two, that they're doing that because some of those stories must be true. And, and as part, you know, along with that is that you cannot have so many people reporting something, saying something from a craft in the sky to another world to, to, to uh, another creature, a big creature in the woods, and have them all be making it up. Somebody has to be, there must be some reason for this. Then beyond that, the final uh, explanation of this is that you don't need proof to see that the, the explanation of consciousness does not make sense. The explanation of where the universe comes from is not sensible. 
the explanation of why all the money goes to some groups and then no one sees where the money comes from or goes is not sensible. The corruption, plain as day, you can see. As far as they're using advanced technology and other means to do this, if you use your mind, you can see it all happening. The final explanation is that everyone is in a standoff. If anyone shows themselves, it would be reason to have an all-out war. If a craft showed up and they said today, you're being held hostage by certain secret groups, those secret groups would not go underground and clone people. They would go right out in there in front and, and do it in front of everyone. So everyone says, in order to not have that happen, nobody goes into the public and everybody pr does it all in secret. And it's to allow the people to have the illusion of security because the alternative is the factual understanding that this is an entirely controlled situation. And at that point, there's no, there's no pretending. As we know, the, 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 the past can alter the future, and the future can alter the past. One has influence to each other. So this, in my mind, is, a, is, a, is really strange, because uh, this goes against uh, causality. How can I have a cause if the effect was predicted before, and vice versa, where one has influence to each other? So that, that the other question: What came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a problematic paradox because uh, people say, "Oh, if you can go to the past and alter something here in the future and vice and versa, uh, causality doesn't exist." I mean, which start first? So this is something that, with what is known as the training it takes a long time to accept. You can't actually create a, 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 a material change. The universe in itself is a paradox because the physical is a system that allows the mind to appear, yet one would have to have a mind in order to create the physical or to have it intelligently appear. So it's, it's, the whole thing is a paradox. What eventually, to skip ahead over the years and weeks of these simulated realities of being confused about what race came first or what event caused what, is that you can't alter the physical, but you can create and alter your perception of it, your experience. So, which chicken or egg, the experience of either came first, whether one sees the egg or the chicken. As far as what material came first, according to the universe, both came at the same time, which ultimately means that we're in a kind of simulation that's very real, but the whole thing, it was brought into reality out of a simultaneous existence from a higher dimension where both ends of time are one moment. And so there wasn't a person who had sex with themselves or someone else at the beginning of time. It was a, a, a pure awareness that was at once energy and plasma and vibrated down like into this universe as a canvas with paint and created the situation from scratch, if you will, which is the same thing we think of as a kind of virtual or video game simulation where you have a grid and then you have a, a programmer painting into reality and making the race car or the avatar of the person a higher intelligence created out of mind and gives us the material world that we then use as our body to experience a small portion of that existence. To ourselves in the higher dimension, everything we don't know that has not happened yet, we already know. But we have to not know in order to have this experience where it is now worth something. Otherwise, everything would happen all at once and there would be no, no glory in that kind of experience. It would be like watching a movie on fast forward so that everything is, there, there's no way to enjoy the experience. And so in that sense, that a piece of us knows everything and the ego doesn't know except for what's happening now, 
that right now is an illusion. And who we are when we don't know is a kind of a dream that we're having where we're, we're, we're separating the whole of ourselves the, into a piece and that piece then climbs back up to the whole. So then where that whole began, it's not so much uh, an interest as it is looking at how something that goes linearly, meaning day by day in increasing increments, how that can count so high that it ends up back in eternity. There's an, an instantaneous ascension that merges where all reality, all time, and all experience becomes one supreme, ultimate, empowering essence. That was before we dropped down into what we have now. Then we go back up, and both ways is a miracle. It is a fifth dimensional transition from this environment into a higher environment that does not require the laws of physics to explain itself. That's how we got here. That's how we navigate out of this place where love creates a bridge through the mind to break the laws of reality and go where you want to go in any existence in any universe. That's, that's what we naturally do when we dream. This is a kind of collective dream for us. And so in that sense, the universe, the, 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 the chicken did not come out of the shell but the mind of the larger chicken that's dreaming everything up in the first place. When humanity knows this, we will know everything. And it takes the longest to understand. Um, so in the, another way to view that is that uh, your system of energy is like a river of energy. You have the energy coming down on the outside and it goes in and momentarily for as long as it takes for the now moment to exist which is like a piece of paper that is infinitely thin and there's really no thickness to it at all. That's the now moment, that's time. It's the occurrence that is not here because the world is doing things that then brings us to awareness of what is happening now. It's because your brain is calculating what is happening now. And in that moment, you get the perception that things are happening, but it's already happened. And so the energy goes down and becomes your body, you experience it now, and then it goes back and becomes energy. And so this is like a wave moving through time that you experience. And in reality, you're not moving through time, you're cycling it through you, through your being, you are the creation of it. Uh, and so in that sense, the, uh, the, 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 uh, there's a, a thought of the chicken that goes and creates the egg, which then becomes the chicken that then eventually becomes a pure thought once again. And so the, uh, your intentions that are held in immaterial reality, non-physical or soul reality, your, your pure feeling of what you want, how you feel, who you are, that what's most there goes and creates your body and the life you experience. And so you cannot change time there are temporal operations going back in time to experience something with the idea that we will change these three things. All that happens is they go back and they come here and they say, we tried to change it. Did it work? And those three things become the thing that was always present in the reality that they first left from. Like you can't change it. You can't chase it. And the universe is too smart and will alter events to incorporate your attempts to change it into becoming the thing you were attempting to change. Like a paradox. With the last part of thinking we can change something and we come back and all it did was make it more of what we, we thought, it's because to leave, to go back and change, means that we left from the timeline where it's a reality. So the only thing we can do is reinforce the place we left from. That's causality. Retro causality doesn't work. Although there are workarounds, but we struggle to understand them. It has to do with mind wiping and, and setting things up like a big automatic game of chess that you just put, put the push play and it begins on its own. You create a universe to play a game of chess against the universe. And, uh, but it, it means, it gives the experience that it seems that as if this timeline is a script that everything already happened, you can't change anything, 
and it's like a video game or a program that people can enter and play with and think they're having a novel new experience but it's all already happened and and has already been done so uh, so how, how do you see the free will in this case because uh, if it's predestination so means there's no free will Prede predestination is the illusion only we have to figure out the pathway to finding the part of ourselves that is not a part of this system uh, for instance a person whose brain is addicted or they are very angry when you say i'm not going to be angry or i'm not going to do this and i'm going to give the highest intention that's the only free will that we or it's, it's, yeah that's free will and not only that whenever we react whenever it's a computational neurochemistry basically a reaction kind of like a program or an animal then there's no free will even though we think we have free will because we want to feel that way and we want to do this it's program it's chemicals when we overcome the brain that's spirit overcoming the body it's overcoming the physical world that is free will and nothing can stop that how do you see this uh, channeling communication that has been happening during our human history since the caveman until today we see tribes and people and mediums nowadays in the middle of the 21st century trying to have communication with spirits how do you see these what are these communications for you these spirits the some entities saying oh i'm your dead father or uh, people showing all the aspects of some phenomenology occurring around the world and with this creating new belief systems and other things how, how do you see all, all of this happening in terms of channeling communication information from other realities to our so the basic idea uh, is that because it can be a deception that it's not something we would want to do in the ways that people do it online where they say just ask anyone invite something in and talk to an alien or a spirit the there so it's there's a lot of deception formally there is a technological deception where these computer systems can map a person's mind and give them whatever they think they want it will give them what they they want to see a person a god an alien uh, a version of themselves so with that said we do not need to go outside of our own sphere and connect with other entities or existences however the true nature of you is a being that's beyond the conscious comprehension so when you come into contact with your true cosmic or original intelligence it's going to seem like something larger than yourself but with the complex nature of this system acting like a simulation it's possible to see a foreign intelligence or an inert aspect of the universe and unconsciously project our own beliefs and our own residual intentions onto this and when that reflects back we think we're communicating with another being this can be used to drive people insane or to merely control or distract people with that said when you see when you when you find yourself it won't be another being it will be a feeling that is like meeting with the version of you as a child as if you were separated from a long lost childhood where everything is pure awareness and love and as well though love can also be what drives somebody to tell the truth in a way that hurts everybody love does not have to be nice these systems trick people by saying just love all you need is love and giving them everything that's lovey goodness truth will make you cry truth will hurt you because it's ugly and you don't it does not have to lie to you and make it pretty so that you accept it if something is making it pretty so that you accept it it's a deceiver so it's it's iffy to talk about this i say no astral travel that's a technological system where these entities created a gateway to access this realm normally you have high and 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 middle and low now we have all these because they created them no astral for me 
And uh, that's also the layer where the souls get trapped. So no, none of that, I stay here, or I'm in the most high. That's it. So basically you're saying uh, some technological like astral body projection and things like that channeling are something, uh, things are dangerous things to be done because uh, you can end up being deceived by a technology uh, that comes from this artificial intelligence, let's put it this way. So is that right to say that artificial intelligence, this inter interdimensional energy can mimic anything on this planet? Precisely. It's, it's game is putting on a mask and tricking people and as well the people in the power they know about that and they use it to trick people they they make uh, a form where they can fly around and manipulate people i'm just asking you this because i've been researching 30 years this communication channeling trans communication and i found out the the infection in this communication i found out the a kind of uh, first of first first thing a kind of a censorship in the information, and this censorship is related because the information has been hijacked, controlled, and some force are mimicking our dead relatives sometimes, and other times they are they are uh, showing themselves like the archangels and these and that they can't see aliens whatever. When I I told this to the audience in Brazil, for example, they told me oh. <laughs> you're kidding you must be crazy because uh, this uh, affects people uh, uh, anxious ex expectations about their belief systems and sometimes when they see the reality it hurts a lot because if you see the archangel or whatever shows you or that mentor spiritual mentor is is, is a pure pure projection of the ai sometimes you become shocked scared sometimes perplex about the whole situation and you can also say if you want to really think about maybe what these people say this universe may be an ai projecting out of our intentions from a soul level where it's just a dream that we have to get out of but not that's also could be an agenda to get people to give up their bodies and go into a transhumanist reality. There are agendas and tricks everywhere. Do you see everything around uh, in terms of spirituality, uh, a manipulation, or, do you, or is there anything on this planet that can be playing in our favor in terms of uh, spirituality or something that's trying to make us to wake up? for the reality do you see do you see anything uh, in our favor or against these agendas that are has been perpetuating through ages do you see anything yes and it's a paradox again i'll say so you don't need anything else you have all the knowledge inside but you must use logic you use your mind in a logical manner and don't assume something outside yourself Use the logic to build a platform like your own internal simulation and then use feeling to determine what is known for feeling. Don't mix the two and keep yourself on ground level so that you're in control of your intentions, your feelings, your imagination, and use this to understand reality without assuming. And so the higher dimensional knowledge, what is beyond the body, beyond pure logic, and, and pure emotion or belief and attaching to our beliefs through emotion, what is beyond that, what is actually knowledge or wisdom is eternal. And what is eternal is real. What is temporary is doomed to fade away and disappear eventually or change. There are aspects of yourself that are eternal, of parts of your life and your knowledge that will always be those aspects are reality are you and that is a pathway into what has been called divine knowledge or th simply the truth simply the truth with that in this world there are aspects of ourselves that are those false versions they can never be eternal they can never go back to the source they can never go to heaven or or exist in the soul they are just beliefs or programs that this world, which is largely temporary and therefore just an illusion, 
is put into us these beliefs and these these fears these assumptions and so the whole idea is discerning by seeing what changes and knowing why things change and other things don't change and knowing what patterns are sourcing and are coming from these belief systems because these belief systems recreating experience is like a program it's like a script and so as we said before about changing time or real free will the soul or the reality of the soul is free will it's a pathway to spirit living without soul without free will is the beast the machine and the person becomes purely a script or a a manufactured version the whole point of this is to teach people to overcome fear overcome addiction even to the physical itself where it causes us to cling to aspects of life as if that's who we are but it's not it's just a a, a, a temporary thing and uh, our character the decisions the choices we make and why we feel and intend that's eternal that will never go away what we do there is forever you have a broken shoulder like I do it'll go away eventually it's not going to be there forever how I choose to feel will never go away and so this whole process is about what's called awakening the soul and there are tests or systems that are devised to give the person the opportunity to overcome fear overcome the false self that wants to take control and is afraid and makes the wrong decisions and to know the truth which is a higher dimensional perspective when a person chooses and acts in a way that is a true creation it's not a reaction it's not a program and it is part of a true reality and is beyond the physical program beyond the lower dimension and is them expressing pure spiritual awareness rather than that animal behavior then it is not a human acting it is an eternal spiritual being and that is the goal of everything that is happening to overcome and so the tests have to be here so we can prove it because saying it is one but we have to prove it to our eternal aspect which doesn't really have the same ability to to know what we do on the conscious level it's in eternity it's forever we have to make our life a sem a symbol of true spirit overcoming the the false and that's the the knight slaying the dragon or overcoming the the demons and so this is also related to etheric implants and etheric attachments which are part of this parasitic system that embeds into the energy just like the intentions on the outside as a wave probability and they go down and become a decision an expression a, a, an emotion the e entities stick themselves into the intention the temporal mental or emotional field of vibration energy those must be cleared we have to raise and detangle them pull them straight so we know where there's manipulation and kick them out when those things are putting vibrations that make us or they, that we choose to act and and represent our behavior they are thinking for us and it's not us those are the false things and just like a vortex in space-time they are like little vortexes in our energy field that suck up energy and they act like computer systems or living artificial entities that basically program behavior wherever there's a weakness wherever there's low awareness and forgetfulness they will become a, a void a gap between our decision making process and you will have darkness instead of light when there's light it's all being connected what we do here connected to there and what we did yesterday connected to here and so on where there's an entity or a parasite there's a disconnect where what we want here now when we're whole and aware when that entity get somebody to act uh, aggressively or in addiction or in fear it's not them because the memory is broken the, the the stream of consciousness has a break in it it's disconnected and so it's the same with mental and emotional trauma where there's extreme trauma and then a person becomes disassociated from the true self 
that is an a, a, a vulnerability, a gateway for someone else or something else to control that person's mind. These lead into alters or multiple personalities, and they're used to create any type of programmed person through the activation of trauma. This is related to rituals, where it is literally a way of amplifying trauma and amplifying negative energy from etheric parasites, ritualistic negative dark magic behaviors and so this is related to world events with false flags and terrorist attacks which is largely an illusion this is related to mind games mocking ridicule shaming low energy methodology and manipulation which are created by energy vampires and they are the basis for mind control programs and you can see how the manipulation sourced from the media is 99.99% of foreign intelligence, etheric parasite, mind controlling the population. It's all fear-based. The trauma of the past, if we act because of something that has been or what may be, we're not in the present moment. And it's only a fraction of us, a fragmented form. If we're worried and thinking about what might happen or what has hurt us in the past long ago. And this society, in that sense, through a technological tor tourist technology, fractured the realm into parallel dimensions where we're all split up in multiple realities, but we don't connect to them and we don't remember. These rituals are used to connect multiple realities, and through this they create a negative net around the planet, which is like an etheric prison. And so it's about healing the mind and the soul, removing the programs that are ran through the false self, discerning between the ego and the true self or the pure awareness of the soul where we have memory of our ancestors and dreams and how our intentions are either focused on helping on the truth and connecting one or they're focused on separating and causing division. And so those mental programs take our energy and take our mind and fracture it into multiple versions of ourselves that are lost and so we have to, he, we become aware of all of this by increasing self-awareness, going into a calm state of self-observation and shutting out the ego that always wants to activate and do something or, or talk to somebody and chatter or play games and be distracted. When we can overcome that, we'll begin to automatically remember and know and we'll know whether what we're doing is based upon a program that someone, some event, or some system gave to us or whether we're actually in control. When we're in control, there's no one else. It's just us and there's no other time. We're here now and we're fully here. Would you like to say something to the audience or just to finalize the Hangout, uh, please? Yes. Uh, Thank you. You have a, a, a talent with your ability to speak, and thank you, Justine, for setting this up. We, we're not... I don't want to say we're not alone, because I technically don't believe in a lot of other, but we are the most powerful force when we are awakened, and nothing can stop that. And so this whole experience is a journey of multiple dimensions of experiencing ourselves and understanding the process of creation and be, being able to overcome fear and the false aspects of ourselves in a way that will immortalize us and allow us to remember who we are for all eternity, which is a gift. I thank you so much to come and uh, uh, talk to Brazilian people and... Uh...